This episode is brought to you by Bumble. Who says Valentine's Day is just for couples? Just because you're not in a relationship doesn't mean you can't get out there and live your best love life. That's where Bumble comes in. This February 14th, you can flip the script and give those relationshipers a friendly dose of FOMO. Say no to staying in this Valentine's Day and yes to more. More dates, more first kisses, more gossip for the group chat girlies. Do Valentine's your way. Date now on Bumble. Joe, we are back to talk about the OC and some white people problems. Yeah. And this one tackles Again. <laughs> this one tackles a very common white person problem, which is falling in love with your best friend's grandfather's girlfriend. In love? I, I don't in lust. I don't know what this is. I don't know if they were in love, but <laughs> there so is much as like, you know. Every ounce of goodwill that every character has had in this show fucking just evaporates by the end of this episode. This is I know, and you had such such good things to say last episode. Yeah, I I hate it. This episode, I was watching this episode and I kept being like how much more time is left? And it's it's like gross on multiple levels, right? Like it's gross mm-hmm. on level 1 cuz Seth Cohen keeps referring to this woman as grandma. But, like, it's still, like, you're 24 and this boy is 16 or 17 years old that you are, like, seducing. Like, it's gross on two different levels simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Could not wrap my head around why Josh Schwartz was like, this is a good idea for episode six. Well, it was very, like, (laughs) I'm surprised. I think it's a little too early, but I'm surprised, like, Stacy's mom didn't play rest. She was getting out of the pool, right? Stacy's mom is on the same album as that All Kinds of Time song from last week. So, like, it should have played. Probably my meanest note uh, was I just wrote, was Jamie Presley not available? Because... (laughs) Uh-huh. This woman, this uh-huh. woman looks so much. I thought it was Jamie Presley for at least two minutes, and I'm like, wait, that's not Jamie Presley. Well, uh, let's get right into it, right? So she comes out of the pool, it's- and she's wearing like a full face of makeup, like her, like her. You know, we haven't discovered like blending yet. Like you could see the highlight on her cheek. It's Fast Times of Richmond High. It's the Fast Times of Richmond High scene. I'm shocked. I'm actually genuinely shocked that they didn't play the cars moving in stereo. Like, it's so clear mm-hmm. that's what they're... Or like you said, Stacey's mom, we did get OK Go with Damn, You're So Hot. Yes. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. like, it, you're right. It's That's not on the nose enough for what this is. Like, it should be, like... Or Mrs. Robinson, like the Lemonheads version of Mrs. Robinson. Yeah. Like, it's just... Mm-hmm. They they know what they want the audience to be doing, and yeah, fapping. That's what they, they yeah. <laughs> oh my god! And it just gets. I thought that that was going to be it. I was going to be like, okay, I forgot that the episode was called the girlfriend. So I'm like, okay, so that's just like a quick weird oh, joke. That's her. Yeah, <laughs> she's it. That's the girlfriend. I can handle hot young girl coming out of the pool. That's fine. Mm-hmm. It's the hot tub scene where I'm just like, what are we? F- fucking doing here with this episode and what are the parents like again right it's that like the neglect <laughs> the, the the parent like like let's just let this you know 24 year old woman who's a fucking piece like a fucking bombshell sit in a hot tub with our teenage boys which at the same time right like there's a certain level of trust right how there's much trust? trust this is the there. first time they've met this woman <laughs> So all they know about this woman is that she's a 24-year-old person who seems to be in in a relationship with their like 50-year older father. Like yeah. I don't know if that's the person you're like, yeah, I'll leave the kids alone. Like the lodge is based around how bad of an idea it is to leave your kids with a woman that you barely know. <laughs> No, maybe 60, I don't know. But, 50 or 60, but, we but do yeah, get... it's an age gap for sure. <laughs> We uh, we're coming in really hot. Um, I <laughs> maybe we should take it back a little okay, bit we'll, because we'll the introduction of Caleb Nickel. Caleb Nickel is like 
is my favorite character. Okay, because I like, I wrote, oh cool, Caleb sucks. Got it. <laughs> like, <laughs> Caleb is my favorite character because of what he does to get what how he re how he plays with the other people in the OC. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do see that he is like a well. According to Summer, he's the Donald Trump of the West. <laughs> so I just I want the record to show that uh, Joe loves Donald Trump is basically what we've concluded here. He loves the way wow. that he manipulates people. And <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! No, but uh, I can already see just in the way that he plays mind games with just Kirsten and Sandy throughout this episode. That all right? I don't like this character. But, but he's that's the re- that's the thing is that I like I hate watch he, I hate watch he's him. got a like a Loki agent of chaos element to him that I I feel like I could appreciate <laughs> yeah but this first episode not a great way to introduce any new characters because this episode is just not fun um, so all of this is happening they're throwing this birthday party for Caleb. It's turning into like the social event of the season. And while all of this is happening, Julie Cooper walks up to Jimmy and just drops a divorce. Which like love the continuity, right? Yeah. Like the first her first scene, she just walks in there. He's like, you know, China, which I just love that it's a it's a pony named China. Yeah. That's my favorite. It was it's like I well, like and I'm sure it's China with a Y. Yeah. Like I just think like the like, wrestler. Every time she, <laughs> like the- yeah, exactly. Every time I think she talks about China, I think she's just like visiting the wrestler China, <laughs> like which like rest in rest in power. Yeah. Oh <laughs> but my like, God. I think like she's just, like the wrestler China at like, but like because at that time it would have been surreal life China, which is so much more unhinged. <laughs> That's um, right. Oh man, the surreal life was great. That was the first back when I didn't watch reality TV. I still watched the surreal life because that was top notch. Like, hey, let's just put yeah. people at the lowest point in their career into a house together. Are you watching the reboot? Oh, they rebooted the surreal world, dude. I'm not watching it. Yeah, stay tuned for next week's pop culture promo because I think it's going to be that I watch the surreal world. Yeah, I, well, yeah, we'll we'll just know that it's. Just know there's a reboot. Okay, and I'll then, I'll do my I'll do my due diligence. <laughs> I'm just gonna say who, the main ca- like one of the main characters, Dennis Rodman. Ooh, so on board. All right, um, but yeah, no, like just you're right. She just rolls in first scene, just like I think we should get a divorce. And you're like, yeah. oh right, okay, so here's where we are. No Shailene Woodley, right? No, 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 uh, uh Caitlin. No, no, no Shailene Woodley. Um, but then we get the Marissa and Luke scene pretty pretty close afterwards i actually thought when luke first shows up i thought he was about to propose to her when he's Ah, like yes because he's like you know i realized when i saw my life flashing before my eyes from the gunshot wound in my arm that was absolutely not going to kill me uh, (laughs) that i need to do things differently and the note that i wrote down was like even if he's with marissa I actually hope that good Luke sticks around for a little bit because I, I want to like him. (laughs) Like I love when Ryan comes over to ask Marissa to Mm -hmm. the party and Luke is just like so chipper and nice. And it's not, there's a way that you can play that role where he's being a douchebag. That's like trying to poke the bear Mm -hmm. with Ryan. But Mm -hmm. unless I'm wrong and misinterpreting it, I don't get that from this at all. I get that. He is like, Literally, because he got shot and because Ryan did all this great stuff, he is, for for at least this episode, has turned a leaf on his opinion of Ryan and is like, you know what? This dude from Chino is a sweet guy. I want nothing but for the best for him. Hey, he's visiting my girlfriend, Marissa. That's fucking awesome. I love my friend Ryan. <laughs> like, like, I love this version of him and I want it. I know that it won't be here forever, but I want it to be here for at least a couple episodes because I do like him being just like overly broy with Ryan. Okay. Now I know that things I happen will... at the end of this episode that could completely change everything instantaneously. I could see here's what I'm going to throw out as a potential thing I could see happening. I could see a full blown role reversal where suddenly Luke is the really nice, good dude. And Ryan is fucking Ryan's unhinged <laughs> douchebag for a couple episodes. But yeah, I, so so I guess this next note is when Ryan is working at the Crab Shack and Gabrielle, the girlfriend, uh, takes the time to visit him. As I wrote, Gabrielle is so uncomfortable. 
every single sentence she speaks seems inappropriately flirty. <laughs> like every line. And it, and we it eventually is. It like, been, it's, yep. it's exactly what we thought. <laughs> Here's the thing, right? So let's assume, I think we're assuming that Ryan is 17, right? So 17. I think that's a fair assumption. We'll stick with that. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 22, seven years, right? Which seven years in seven it, years from now, no biggie. If Ryan's yeah. 24 yeah. and she's, what, 33? I'm terrible at math. 31? Like, whatever. That is that is totally fine. I yeah. The older you get, the more the age difference matters less to a certain point. Like Until you reach, there's a threshold. There is right? a it's threshold, like, but like... It's, a, it's one of those like graphs where it's like age difference doesn't matter until you reach like 50 and then it matters a lot. That, like I would say that there's a... I don't know if there's an exact math. I would say that at a certain age, 20 is like 20 year difference is like the threshold. Like someone who's like mid 60s dating someone mid 40s, I don't think I would. I'd think, oh, that's odd, but I wouldn't like be like, what's going on there? But if there's a 40 year age gap, I am immediately like, what is what is happening? <laughs> yeah. Like, so yeah. for me in real life, I'm like, if there's a 15 year age gap, it's kind of, yeah, you're hitting a weirdness. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like kind of seeing someone who's 10 years younger than me. So I don't mind that, but like, no, and it's, 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 it's literally like the vibe. Like the only what? time that a 10 year age difference would matter is if you were 21, 18. 18. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But yeah, as soon as you cross over into 30, I think all is a 10 year age gap is perfectly fine maybe 31 like 31 you want them, yeah yeah you it's awkward it's like they I'm should be a, a nice dinner yeah, they should be allowed to drink <laughs> i think that that's that's well we'll get into it that's part of my pop culture promo but it's a topic that's been tackled in one of the show the show i will talk about for my pop culture promo but yeah no there's it's a it's an uncomfortable age gap but still it's no matter what the whatever the ad age gap is the youngest person in said age gap should be 18 or older period yes. like yes yes at least at least if you, at a at minimum least, at least if you're if you are especially if you are pursuing a physical relationship with them yeah um this whole thing with uh grandma gabby is just like did you watch the hulu series a teacher i did yes <laughs> That's what it was giving yep. me. It's it's very oh God. I don't like it, and I I I almost would have rather gone with the ick factor of her being like twenty and twenty one, where I'd be like, okay, this is at least palpable to me that like she's twenty one, mm-hmm. she's interested in a seventeen year old. It makes the creepierness and the Caleb factor of it, but like the fact that they went out of their way to be like, oh, she's 24. She's seven years older yeah. than him. It's like... She's seven years older. She... Well, the other thing, too, I mean, like, they kind of, like, they kind of give you enough backstory that pathologizes her, like, why she would be interested in a 17-year-old. And, like, you know, like, he's got what, like, he's got the kind of, like, Ryan, I know he's older. He's not 17, right? He's in his 20s. Yeah. But, like, the thing about it is, is that he... It's it's playing into two different things. One, he he's got the the Frank Abagnale Jr. excuse from Catch Me If You Can, where like he looks older than he is, and so therefore like it disarms her in that way. Uh, maybe it's threefold. Two, they give you enough backstory about who Gabby is to realize that she didn't really have a childhood. Yeah, like you know she was carted off to Japan, right, to do modeling gigs when she was young, so she didn't have a childhood. So it's kind of that like Neverland Ranchy type of like, oh, this is a guy that i would have loved to be with in high school and he happens to also be in high school and then like three it's just like the it's irresponsible yeah um it's on the creator's I was gonna part say, it's irresponsible for, storytelling in general like, exactly and the, and the thing about it too right is that like that's also what's kind of gross about like stacy's mom with the music video stacy's mom where you have like this young kid lusting after i forget who's who's uh rachel hunter yeah, I but think. it's like a 35 year old woman and like a nine ten year old kid like yeah exactly so like they so they do it from his gaze which is, you know, that she's this, like, sex pot mom when that's not what's happening, yeah. right? But, like, in this, it's like, no, what you what 
you hope happens with the wish fulfillment of it and like playing that out is what's irresponsible yeah right and so it's it makes it gross on all levels she's kind of grooming him like yeah, it's they're... all it's all gross it's all gross it's all bad and as if this wasn't gross enough mm-hmm. like i don't like a single storyline that we're trying to follow in this episode like i don't like the mm-hmm. ryan gabby story i my notes I, my notes there's sh- a storyline you do like because <laughs> they're all pretty shitty because i mean they're all bad the only thing i can say is that i wrote a no- I'm going to read you verbatim a note that I wrote in the middle of the episode. And my feelings on this have shifted slightly since I wrote it. But I wrote, I know that at some point in the very near future, Summer dresses up like Wonder Woman for Seth. And I have no clue how we are getting to that point in just six episodes. Um, Seth needs to stand up for himself because this shit is getting ridiculous. Like I was getting so frustrated at her like mm-hmm. fake flirtiness to have him invite her to a party that he knows she doesn't want to be there with him, but he's so spinelessly in love with this woman who gives him no attention whatsoever that he even says, wait, do you want to just go to the party or do you want to go with me? And she just looks at me and goes, whatever, I don't care. Like it makes me so angry for both of these characters. Cause I'm like, summer's a bitch and I hate throwing that word around, but she is straight up acting a bitch right now in this episode. And Seth is just taking it at this point when I'm writing the notes. But like, I'm just like, what? Like, I don't get it. And like, I am glad that towards the end of the episode, Seth finally stands up for himself. And he's like, no, I'm not going to introduce you to any of these fucking people because like you treated me like garbage and like good for him. But like, just because he remembers some shit from when she was in middle school, like that is not enough of a reason for me to finally just flip the switch. on being like, Oh, I'm team summer now. Like I'm hoping that a lot more happens over the next six episodes to make me care that she's willing to dress up like wonder woman for his ass because she has been a jerk to him this entire series well she's been a jerk to him but also like like he's come creepy on, Seth. he's creepy we, what how many episodes ago was it two episodes now the debut where anna basically yeah, why like, is you he know, not just chasing anna where the fuck has anna been for two episodes <laughs> exactly where the fuck has anna been where is the fact that like he knew how to get to her and he did stand up for himself then. But it's like you're repeating these kind of same mistakes. And I get it, right? Like when your crush is into you, Matt, I don't need to tell you. When your crush is into you in a ver- in, in a specific way, that's all you can see. Yeah. And you're like blinded a little. You're, you know, you, you, you got rose colored glasses on. You're blinded a little bit. But like she's not being subtle about yeah, it. That's I the almost, other thing too. I almost wish that this episode, this episode would make more sense if it was before the debut. In all sincerity, because you're right. The debut, correct, correct. The debut. It's like he knows how to push your buttons to to stand up for himself, and he meets someone who's a way better match for him. Like, how how are we like two episodes later? We haven't seen this girl who's into all the same shit. Clearly likes him. Is about to go sailing for the holiday. Is that it? Because she's gone sailing. Mm-hmm. Is that why Anna hasn't been here? <laughs> That's right. She's going to Tahiti. Yeah, that she's been sailing to Tahiti. That's why still but you're correct you are absolutely correct this episode could have come because we would get one selfishly we get caleb nickel earlier yeah <laughs> <laughs> we would get caleb nickel earlier but like because of how they framed it with the jimmy stuff like you couldn't have that right yeah but still i mean the jimmy stuff is oh no i guess it is it is all right there's wait look i haven't seen the rest of the season i'm sure that there's ways that you can workshop that jimmy needs money but no one else in town knows what's going on, but Julie knows type deal before you get to the debut. There there are ways you could just twist and bend a few things to fit this in as episode four and push the debut at episode five. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make Seth seem like such a fucking flip-flopping loser on, on this stuff. Seth also has the most uncomfortable line of the entire episode when he says, you made out with my grandma. That's kind of hot. Like, no. I, like... No, <laughs> like, I don't care that she's this hot sex pot 24 year old. You got to be like, yo, that's my grandma, my grandfather's girlfriend. No. And if he finds out because you already burned down one of his properties, he's going to fucking yeah. kill you. <laughs> and we don't like, here's the thing, right? I, it, grandfather's girlfriend 
in like name alone because I don't think we see them together at all. No. Except maybe yeah, no, not even when they arrive. Like not, like we don't see them together Does, at all. So I'm going to ask a question I actually do want you to answer. This is the only time we see Gabrielle, right? She's not like Absolutely. A, like, Absolutely. Like, it's like such like a throwaway. None of this matters. Like none of this plot yeah. means anything. It's not like her and it's Ryan. It's the only time we see Gabby. It's the only time we see fucking Donnie from last, you know, like Donnie would go on to be on the Vampire Diaries later. Yeah, so they're just later, like introducing like, these fucking characters for like the sake of them like stirring shit for an episode and then they just vanish. And that exactly, that to which, me is bad yeah. drama. Like like I do like the OC so far. This is not a show that I hate. I actually look forward to when we have a recording time set up because I'm like, oh, I can watch two more episodes. Like it's something I'm looking forward to watching. But like if you have to keep bringing out, bringing in external characters to stir up the drama within your characters' lives, mm-hmm. and you don't even have the audacity to like keep them around for a couple episodes to fuel the yeah. fire, like. What the fuck are you yeah. doing? You're just writing, you're creating characters that are just like Deus Mahina, just like walking in and fucking up yep. shit. Like it's very, but it's very soap opera, right? It like is. That's like it is. That's the that's very um of the time. That's very prime time soap opera. Of Have it all. you ever seen? Uh, this will not be my pop culture promo because this movie has never been in the popular zeitgeist. But did you ever see the John Candy movie Delirious? No. All right. I just watched it the other day. Um. It's 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 fine. If you're charmed by John Candy the way that I'm always charmed by John Candy, I just think he's a very sweet actor. Um, it was 1991, uh, and the concept of the movie is that he's the head writer at a soap opera, and he's in love with the lead actress of the soap opera, and him and her are supposed to go on a vacation, and he gets into a car accident, and when he wakes up, he's inside of his own soap opera. Um, but before Ooh, before he leaves, there was a dispute with him and the other producers where they wanted to add in these plot elements that he didn't want added in there. So in this world of the soap opera, all of the producer notes are coming to life, but he has a typewriter that he can change them. So like mm. when they keep adding elements he doesn't like, he'll type in a new storyline and it's kind of just watching the like lives of all these characters be completely jostled by like the story's being pulled in two different directions for the 90 minute duration of the movie. It's not particularly good, but it's an interesting concept a couple of years before, like something like stranger than fiction did a much more compelling take. Yeah. But yes, I watched that right before I put on the OC and you are right. The soap opera vibes of how everything is presented. Like this is teen soap opera with a capital T capital S capital yeah. O like, You'll see this also. Like I love, I I love Ugly Betty. I watched it live, and I yeah. binged it at least three times since in the last few years. Uh, thank you, COVID. And it's the same thing. It's like it's the it's um, because like in in Ugly Betty, you have like the the plot devices is like they're putting out a magazine. So the the quirky the quirky character of the week is a function of what they need to accomplish yeah. for the issue that they're trying to put out, right? In in this, it's like, okay, well, now we're trying to... There is no quirky function. We're trying to manufacture it in some way. And that's why you get the Donnie, you get the yeah. Gabby of it all. Well, I was going to say a great example as well is uh, a show that I adore. And I've been meaning to rewatch it because it was something I watched during COVID was uh, Jane the Virgin. Um, the way oh, that Jane mm-hmm. the Virgin juggles the telenovela tropes, but is pretty much always consistent... I won't say consistent with the characters, but consistent with the actors, <laughs> um, sure, sure, you know, sure, like sure, sure. Con- playing into those soap opera tropes of like, oh, this actor is going to play their identical twin sister and that's going to create drama. And this person's got you think they're dead, but they're not or like all of those tropes mm-hmm. that are like infamous in soap operas, but like using a very small cast to do a lot where the OC just seems like they cannot bring in enough throwaway characters episode you know, to episode you know white people problems is expensive yeah, like you need you that's can't true. you need to have a bunch of different whites come in they got a lot of friends do, they got a lot of, they got a lot of friends <laughs> but like but actually they got a lot of acquaintances is what they got yes <laughs> um, yes but yeah so jimmy starts pulling this wild move at the party where he's like i need to get four mil fast so i'm gonna try to get caleb to give me money and or hire me, even though I am the biggest flight risk that he could possibly bring into yeah. his company right now. 
Um, and it doesn't work All out. On the like, and saying the audacity of Jimmy Cooper to look Sandy in the face and be like, "Yeah," or no, who is it? Like he to look whoever. I think it's Sandy, yeah. right? He looks Sandy in the face and he's just like, "Oh yeah, the man tried to get me to marry Kirsten." Yeah, like, yeah. That's a one of the reasons why Sandy fucking hates you, and b one of the reasons why Caleb hates Sandy. <laughs> Sandy. Yeah. It's because he's not Jimmy Cooper. And now Jimmy Cooper's just rolling in here. But even Caleb's like, no. And then all of a sudden, Julie Cooper rolls in there with her sob story and her kiss on the cheek. And I'm like, I swear to God, if there's a Caleb, Julie Cooper romance story coming around the pipe, I don't know how I'm going to react. But it probably won't make me feel as fucking gross as this Gabby and Ryan bloodline has been making me feel. <laughs> it's slightly more age appropriate. Yeah. But then, I mean, Ryan fucks up like a like a kid who for the last five episodes his biggest fuck up his biggest fuck up that's fully on him is stealing a car in the first minute of the first episode beyond this he is a dude trying his best to just like yeah. survive but mm-hmm. he goes for it with grandma gabby marissa storms in sees it and then marissa loses her fucking virginity to luke like what is happening Yep. This is chaos. You have to have you have to have a virginity thing. Yeah, you well, hey, I just it's can't like compulsory believe to have a virginity plot. There are so many things that have happened in six episodes that should be stretched out amongst multiple seasons. Like there is no drama if she's already lost her virginity this quickly in the mm-hmm. show to me. Like not oh god, it's crazy. And then I hand it at it. Seth stands up for himself. He starts spouting out all these things. These, you know, it's it's that classic, like, these guys don't appreciate what you do, like when you feed that skinny squirrel because the fat squirrel keeps eating its food and, you know, they don't remember your mermaid poem and like blah, 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 blah. And she's just like, oh my God, you remember that? Here's a kiss. I'm going to go introduce myself to these dudes by myself. I don't need you. Uh, whatever. Yeah. The only likable line that Summer has said so far in six whole episodes of this show is her going, I hate that mean squirrel. <laughs> this episode sucks, Joe. This is a bad episode of television. It's bad. <laughs> like I I thought that the I you you turned my head around a little bit because I what was a, for me what made the last episode bad and kind of eye rolly was the like like the the we're trying to have a conversation about class like it revealed the thesis yeah it, it like it's cemented what the thesis of the show is and i get that but like this episode right next to it is just like i i can't stand i cannot stand um characters doing things that are so wild and almost out of character. Yeah, like it, that's where it's kind of believable, right? Like you said, he, this kid, 17 years old, he fucked up because like, when is this ever going to be dropped into his lap again? Also too, like not for nothing, this is like, like he already burned down, like he burned down Cal's, one of Cal's houses. Yeah. What makes him think that it's going to be any better for his case th- when he's like caught smashing his like fucking God. grandma Gabby's puss? And this is like, and this is a character who up until this point has been so unrelentlessly loyal to Marissa mm-hmm. while she's mm-hmm. been with Luke. Like, do you think that this isn't just that, like, like, I just, I don't get it. I don't get, and I've look, maybe this is a male thing that I have never tapped into, but like, I've never been one for the like get over somebody by getting under somebody else type philosophy. Oh, but oh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't relate. But but <laughs> especially not like thirty seconds after the fact. Like this is well, this like, is like it, instant fucking taneous. <laughs> like so, hold on to this right because. Marissa do I mean like this kind of reveals a like starts to uh start a little bit of the pattern of like Marissa is a little self-destructive right she she has some like self-destructive behaviors and I think we'll see that in the next two episodes I'm pretty sure um after this but the thing about this right is that to like looking back on it now it's like wow we are setting up 
we're setting up the crux of the like a, a big plot point of the rest of the se- rest of the season right. and just like the fact that like she like she she doesn't have it as all together but is like just so willing to um like I don't know. Like I couldn't do that. Like I cannot relate to. I cannot relate to making a decision that rash. Yeah. Right. And the thing is, is that like virginity is a con. Virginity is a construct. Yes. But at the at the same time, it's I know we know that it means something to her. Yes. So to watch her throw it away like this is so disturbing it makes this it makes the sex scene really difficult to watch it's uncomfortable all of this whole episode is uncomfortable and it as far as i can tell and you can tell me one way or the other it seems to provide so little to the rest of the like forward momentum of the story that i feel like if i was doing a rewatch i could just fucking skip this episode i could just be like it's not worth the uncomfortableness for the what 30 seconds of plot development sure. that comes out of it. Like sure. it's, it just seems like such a fucking weird, gross throwaway episode to do six episodes into your series. Yeah. <laughs> like the only, the only thing that this episode does and it, and is even remotely pertinent to the rest of the series is the stuff with Caleb. Yeah. But even that, it, he's it's, barely in his debut episode. Exactly. <laughs> but like, he, and he ends up becoming like a series regular at the end, right? Yeah. So like by the end of it, spoiler alert, but you know, I think you saw that coming. And because you, you know what happens at Chrismica. So, you yes, know, we, I do know that it's the <laughs> only episode I've seen is Chrismica. So exactly. So like he, the thing about all the Caleb stuff is that like, is this episode, the episode is called The Girlfriend. So like it references Caleb without referencing Caleb directly, but all of his stuff is the true meat of it. Like you see, you learn instantly the, um, the dynamic that he and Kirsten have uh, for better or worse. You see his tender moments and he kind of exposes his, you know, he, he exposes his tender moments in that way. You see the like weird chemistry with Julie Cooper, which like, is kind of shocking considering that he like is apparently, you know, he's apparently like, you know, dicking down 24 year old grandma over here um, (laughs) or whatever. But like, it's just everything with Caleb, like they should have just made it a more Caleb focused thing or done it in a different episode and made like, put it, if you moved all of the Caleb stuff to the next episode, it would have had more meat. We didn't need any of this Gabby stuff. I want to propose something that is almost definitely i mean maybe i'm wrong this could be me reading way too far into it but i am looking at the six episodes that we've talked about obviously the first episode is just the premiere but i think that every one of these episodes has some type of double meeting to it um so like episode two say more so episode two the model home right like obviously it's about ryan living in a model home but it's also about ryan trying to find that idealized version of a home for himself right like it's him Mm -hmm. like trying to build a home episode three is the gamble which is obviously a reference to the casino night but also that they took a gamble on bringing back ryan's mom into his life and bringing her this event Mm -hmm. this one's a little bit rocky (laughs) admittedly the debut it's also the debut of anna (laughs) um but then the outsider, we already tackled Ryan and Donnie are both the outsiders and the girlfriend could literally be referring to Gabby or it could be referring to Marissa in this case because she's caught in between the girlfriend of two different people. Oh, <laughs> Matt, look at you. Look at you. Check out the big brain on Matt. Yeah, so we're going to I'm going to keep I'm going to keep my eyes open on this for all these other episodes to see if there's a double meaning in each title. The debut the debut could also be the fact that like Jimmy the reveal, oh, right? Oh, the reveal of debuts. debuts. Yeah, there you go. But the reveal of Jimmy's like, you know, controversy felony. Yeah. And felony. yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, that's my that's our new game is to find out all of the different different meanings What's at the, the title yeah the double meaning <laughs> this episode is brought to you by bumble who says valentine's day is just for couples just because you're not in a relationship doesn't mean you can't get out there and live your best love life that's where bumble comes in 
This February 14th, you can flip the script and give those relationshipers a friendly dose of FOMO. Say no to staying in this Valentine's Day and yes to more. More dates, more first kisses, more gossip for the group chat girlies. Do Valentine's your way. Date now on Bumble. Do you like to laugh, geek out on music, and learn all about that band or artist who had that one song back in the day, but then seemed to fall off the face of the earth? If so, you need to subscribe to One Hit Thunder. Together with an array of interesting and hilarious guests, we do a weekly dive into one-hit wonders like Eiffel 65's Blue, Crayshon's Gucci Gucci, EMF's Unbelievable, Delamitri's Roll to Me, Los Del Rio's Macarena, Musical Youth's Past the Duchy, and even Patrick Swayze's She's Like the Wind. So are you subscribed to One Hit Thunder or what? As Desiree would say, you gotta be. And as K7 would encourage, you gotta come baby come and join in on the fun of the One Hit Thunder podcast. I mean, the songs were uneventful in this episode. Uh, so it was that, okay, go, damn, you're so hot in the beginning. Uh, when Marissa's talking to Luke in her bedroom, the Runaways' Wait For Me is playing. When Gabby shows up at the Crab Shack, the Faders' Disco Church is playing. Um, when Marissa and Ryan talk outside, Palm Beach or Palm Street Break is playing. Soul Kid number one, More Bounce in California is playing when they're walking around the boardwalk, which is definitely the most earwormy of the songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then during the awkward sex scene, uh, Tricky's Hollow is playing. Um, I just went with OK Go. It's it's. Yeah. It feels like the only correct one, even though I do still have that. We got mob bounds in California, <laughs> like in my head, like that. OK, go song is appropriately placed. And it's also at the peak of the episode, which is yeah. the beginning. It, <laughs> it's also like I was as I'm like watching the episode, I was like, I wonder if that's OK, go. <laughs> so <laughs> I literally said I was like, I wonder if that's OK, go. It kind of sounds like OK. Go. And there's deeper <laughs> meaning there because. Josh Schwartz is telling Ryan to, okay, go towards Gabrielle for this episode. Uh, apparently. <laughs> now you're reaching. Yeah. All right. All right. Do, you, uh, do you have your pop culture promo for this week? I do. I do. So we talked a little bit about Matt's uh, obsession with uh, the Great British Baking Show. I offer to everybody... Um, not the not the antithesis, but another similar cooking show that made me feel good. Um, the Big Brunch Ooh. on HBO Max. Ooh. Um, it's uh, hosted by Dan Levy of uh, Schitt's Creek fame. Nice. And uh, Dan Levy and two other judges. Uh, one is a food writer and uh, one's a food writer. And one is the other one is a like... Um, a, a restaurateur who not a chef, but like, you know, understands the business of restaurants. They uh, gather a group of chefs who are um, working in their communities and have various ideas about how they want to like expand their business or they have like their, you know, particular idea about how to expand their business or their brand. And the competition is to a series of challenges around the meal of brunch. And then at the end, the person who wins, wins $300,000 in capital investment funds to go and make their, uh, to make their dream happen. Oh, wow. And it's so wholesome. <laughs> it's so delightful. Um, and it also is just like, I watched it. I started watching it because I was house and slash cat sitting for a friend and um, their like next door neighbor is a professional chef and I know him as well. So we have never had, we've never spent like time one-on-one together, but he came over and he made, he made brunch (laughs) and it was delicious. And then we started watching the show together and it was just, it's the perfect show to watch if you're trying to like waste a bunch of time at home having like a lazy day while you're eating or after you're eating. But I got to say that it is just, it gets a lot of things about brunch correctly and it makes you rethink what the meal could be. And the challenges are really cool and inventive. Um, Also too, my favorite feature is that they have, you know how like in some shows there's like a house DJ, right? Like that instead of having a house DJ, they have like a bartender. Okay. And, all she does is she comes over and takes the judge's drink orders and like 
it's like, I'm feeling like a this drink. And she's like, okay, good. And she comes and she brings it to them because that's also part of like brunch, right? Oh, is this idea yeah. that you're eating, you're eating nice, delicious, decadent food. And you're also like, you know, drinking a little hair of the dog. So, all right. All right, I'll have to check that out. The big brunch. I will check that out. Um, this uh, my my pop culture pop culture promo uh, would have tied in nicely with our guest two weeks ago. Uh, I finally finished Friends for the first time. Oh, um, so for the first time, I never watched the full series from front to back oh. before. I watched like a maybe like three or four seasons live, and then never never finished it. So. Uh, while listening along to Mallory's podcast, I've been watching the episodes, and uh, as of the other day, I finished it, and it's it's a charmingly middle of the road show to me. Like when it <laughs> when it's like you get these episodes that are like brilliant. Like the one where Ross is fine is amazing. The one with the yes. prom video, like there's these incredible episodes that it's like every single moment is hysterical and works but then there are the one where no one's ready yeah is like prime example the one where no one's ready needs to be taught along with an episode from the reboot of one day at a time those two episodes need to be taught in like television writing courses on how you do a bottle episode yes because it doesn't ever feel like you're in a bottle episode in that one the way that like other episodes do where it's like no this is just them naturally struggling um, but yeah, it's just the the way that they do good storylines always outweighs. But then like there are some there are some plots. There are some moments where I'm just like, why? I, I texted a friend of mine who loves friends a couple days ago when I was watching when I'm like, did they really just waste 10 full episodes on this Charlie story to have the like least inspired way to write her out of the show humanly possible? Like. There's just these moments where you're like, God damn it. Like towards mm-hmm. the end of the series, you can tell that they're getting renewed for seasons that they don't really want to keep making, but it it's, but it's, I, I get why it's important and I get why people love it. And I probably will rewatch it again. The, the, the good vibes that come from just having it on as like a beautiful background hum while you're doing other things mm-hmm. uh, cannot mm-hmm. be like, there's very few shows that I think have that same. I mean, I use warm blanket too much, but like that have that just like, Oh, this is just comforting house noise to have on in the yeah. background. I think it's why it's on TV yeah. constantly. Like it's constantly on some channel yeah. it's and it's got a nice laugh track. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yes, that is, it for now we will be back next week with another episode featuring a guest one that the guest really said i want to be on this episode so we will uh and double meanings apparently apparently we'll find out we'll find out what the escape means listening to the Geekscape Network. 